And I wanted to to talk a little bit about um, the, the there is an oral health division of CDC. Yes. And uh, OSAP is tightly, tightly partnered with the CDC. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, they um, OSAP has been has partnered with CDC for for many, many years, um, even in the, the, the beginnings of when before they actually had their own division. And, um, you know, I, I was it was shared with me by a former director of the CDC that um, of that division that when he first um, went to an OSAP meeting, he was blown away because of our membership, because our membership's not only clinicians, educators, the consultants that do the training, but it was the manufacturers and the distributors mm-hmm. of dental infection control products. And they realized that, you know, as they're looking at guidance and, you know, should back in the day when they were looking at dental hand pieces, you know, what, can they be sterilized? They could go right to those manufacturers and say, help us understand this. Mm-hmm. And so they really relied become relied on OSAP. And um, we work with them to help um, um, as they develop guidance, to give insight, and to help get their messages across. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a, a big piece. And they participate with us. They speak at our um, our annual boot camp that's every January. It's a very three-day um, foundational infection control training. It's It's foundational, but it is intense. I mean, it's like 7.30 to 5.30. It is incredible. And we have many of the CDC experts who come in from from various areas of CDC, not just Division of Oral Health, but to talk about um, infection prevention. And um, and then, of course, they're part of our um, annual conferences as well. Um, So through, through COVID, um, we've worked really closely with them to um, um, help look at, you know, FAQs coming in, helping with guidance. We, we do have a contract with them right now that we're working on that um, one of the tasks um, that um, is required in this contract was for us to conduct three listening sessions um, so that CDC could hear from dental professionals how the interim guidance is working, where there are challenges. So as we continue to move forward, Mm -hmm. they know where adjustments might need to be made so that we're making sure we're keeping everybody safe. And so the first listening session we held um, was um, in July and it was, they wanted to hear from the dentist, from the practicing dentist. So we engaged, um, uh, 10 professional dental associations, a national dental association. So we had representatives from the American Dental Association, the National Dental Association, the Academy of General Dentistry, all of the specialists. Mm -hmm. And um, they sent um, uh, representatives from their association. I think we had 121 people that participate in this virtual listening session, um, uh, which was incredible. And then the next one we did was on public health and education. Mm. So we had representatives from the National Public Health Dental Associations and ADEA. And then the final one, they wanted to hear from the dental team members. So we engaged ADHA, ADAA, ADOM. So we had the the hygienists, the assistants, the office managers, so that, again, CDC could hear from them. And then from all of that, we OSAP will, will be presenting um, uh, recommended changes that might need to be made to the guidance to um, the CDC. So it's, it's an ongoing, we'll be doing some webinars. Those are going to be coming up in the near future. That's also part of that contract. Um, but it's, yeah, very exciting. Such important work. 